In 1635, anxious about the growing foreign influence in Japan, the shogun Tokugawa Imitsu began enforcing strict government regulation on Japan's interactions with the outside world. He banned Japanese people from leaving the country and forbade Japanese people who left from returning. Trade with outsiders would henceforth be limited to one port off the coast of Nagasaki, Dejima. For the next 220 years, or until 1858, the Sakoku Edict instituted a policy of Japanese seclusion. This time period in Japan is known as the Edo period. However, Japan's seclusion from the outside world was not preordained. In fact, the period leading up to the Sakoku Edict witnessed a flourishing interest in the outside world amongst Japanese people and produced profound changes for the country and Asia in general. Today, I would like to focus on the rather interesting history of the first major Japan town, or in Japanese, Nihon Machi, which were a series of communities thriving throughout Southeast Asia during the 16th and 17th centuries. In the 60 years leading to the Sakoku Edict, Japan played a substantial role in international affairs within Southeast Asia, but most prominently within the rise of the Ayutthaya Kingdom, which would become the precursor state of Siam or modern-day Thailand. So if you are interested in this topic, you are welcome to join me as we explore the history of Thailand's first Japanese community. For many centuries before the early modern period, Japanese people traveled outside the country for a variety of reasons, especially commercial. However, it was during the 16th century Japanese activity in international trade increased substantially. Merchants poured out of the country seeking fortunes in trade, while, on the other hand, samurai and ronin left Japan searching for work as mercenaries for Asian states and European trading companies like the VOC. Most of these warriors were members of armies who had lost major conflicts within Japan, fighting on the losing side of political conflicts during the feudal states period, while others were ronin and veterans of the Japanese invasions of Korea. Briefly during the 16th and 17th century, Japan engaged in extensive overseas activities and established a significant presence throughout Southeast Asia and elsewhere. Japanese communities, or Nihon Machi, were found throughout every major trading port and political center in Asia, which allowed Japan to exert much political and economic influence wherever these communities were located. During this time period, we see major Nihon Machi forming in places like Batavia, controlled by the Dutch, Hao An and Nguyen controlled southern Vietnam, Spanish controlled Manila in the Philippines, and even Phnom Penh in Cambodia. Each of these Japanese communities had a portmaster who operated as the leader of the Japanese community, usually of Japanese descent. Malayan Indonesian people called these individuals Cyan Bars. These individuals oversaw most activities of residents and served as liaisons between their community and local authorities. They also had the duty of coordinating trade with non-resident Japanese traders who came to the port. So, who were these Japanese people who chose to live so far from home? To understand that, we need to look a little further into what was happening in Japan at the time of their arrival to Southeast Asia. In 1592, the shogun Toyotomi Hideyoshi established the Red Seal System. This was a system devoted to international trade. Aboard the so-called Red Seal ships, Japanese merchants sailed from Japan to Southeast Asia with Red Sealed letters issued by the shogunate, which guaranteed the protection from Hideyoshi's army. The system was created as a means to control traders and reduce instances of piracy in the seas around Japan. For the most part, the Red Seal system favored feudal lords loyal to Hideyoshi as well as merchants interested in foreign trade. The Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, and English each had diplomatic relationships with the shogunate alongside other rulers in Southeast Asia, so they all agreed to not harass Japanese ships. From 1600 to 1635, there were more than 350 Red Seal ships traveling from Japan to trade with Southeast Asia. As a result, many Japanese traders established Nihon Machi to facilitate trade with local merchants and coordinate trade back to Japan. Nihon Machi originally served as communities for Japanese merchants. However, during the later decades, a new group would soon overtake them as the principal residents of overseas Japanese communities in Southeast Asia. After reunifying Japan, Hideyoshi began to turn his attention toward external threats to Japanese society, 
most especially Europeans who had gained considerable influence in Southeast Asia. But most concerning was the increased presence of European missionaries and the spread of Christianity on the islands. Between 1553 and 1620, 86 daimyos were officially baptized and many others had become quite sympathetic to Christians. By 1587, Hideyoshi became alarmed to hear reports that Christian lords forced conversions of retainers and commoners and also enslaved Japanese people to foreigners. After invading and conquering the independent kingdom of Kyushu, south of Japan, Hideyoshi promulgated the Purge Directive to the Jesuits, which forbade the selling of Japanese people to the Portuguese in banned missions. However, the decree was not immediately enforced, and Christian missionaries continued to proselytize for a number of years. Hideyoshi became more concerned about the divided loyalties of peasants, which could be grounds for potential rebellion. Eventually, he began the persecution and execution of Japanese Christian converts, the most famous being the 26 Martyrs of Japan, whose execution occurred in 1597. The following year, Hideyoshi would die and the persecution of Christians would end for the time being. In 1600, the Tokugawa shogunate assumed control over Japan, and the new shogun was equally suspicious of Christian activities in Japan. Like his predecessor Hideyoshi, he began the systemic persecution of Christians within Japan. The population of Christians in Japan in roughly 1582 is estimated to be about 200,000 converts, with roughly a thousand people being martyred during this time period. So what we see within the Nihon Machis is an increased presence of Japanese Christians who began to flee Japan as a result of Toyotomi Hideyoshi's persecution and later on the Tokugawa's. The capital city of the Siamese, Ayutthaya, hosted the largest settlement of Japanese people abroad in the 1600s. The village was named Ban Yipon, which was home to about 1,500 Japanese. During the time period, Ayutthaya and Tokugawa Japan formed a strong diplomatic relationship. The Siamese had been trading with Japan since about 1570. The Thai kings engaged in a formal alliance with the Tokugawa shoguns, receiving shipments of arms and munitions, among other things. In the in the 1620s, Japan was Ayutthaya's most important trade partner, as the city hosted over 20 Japanese merchant houses and dozens of ships engaged in commercial shipping between the Ayutthaya Empire and Nagasaki each year. However, Ayutthaya's most important import from Japan were mercenaries. The Dutch East India Company, or the VOC, was the first to employ Japanese mercenaries. They established a program to recruit hundreds of Japanese soldiers with permission from the Tokugawa Shogun. In 1613, the VOC recruited hundreds of Japanese mercenaries to fight and protect their colonies throughout Southeast Asia. Japanese samurai and ronin also found significant employment in the kingdoms of Cambodia and Ayutthaya. These Japanese warriors were highly valued for their military expertise, and in Ayutthaya became organized within the Department of Japanese Volunteers under the King Song Tham. Many exiled samurai and ronin also served the Thai royals as personal bodyguards. One of the most famous residents of Banyapon Nihonmachi was Yamada Nagamasa. He was a samurai born in Nuzumazu, Shizoka in 1590 in Japan and had been the palaquin bearer for the Lord of Nuzumazu, where eventually became involved in trade activities in Southeast Asia, particularly involving the Red Seal ships. He eventually settled in Ayutthaya Kingdom around 1612. After leaving Japan, Yamada served many years as a privateer harassing and plundering Dutch ships near Batavia, where he developed a strong military reputation for taking on the Dutch East India Company. He eventually found employment within Ayutthaya under the King Song Tham. In 15 years, he was able to raise from the lowest rank of Thai nobility and achieve a senior rank within Ayutthaya. He gained a prominent position under King Song Tham, serving as the head of the Japanese army under the Japanese flag. In Ayutthaya, Yamada led an army of 700 Japanese samurai and ronin. The Japanese volunteers participated in suppressing rebellions, civil wars, and even became embroiled in secession disputes. Yamada even gained a governorship of a few provinces within the Ayutthaya Empire. However, Ayutthaya and Japan's relationship became strained due to a secession crisis among Thai kings and politicians during the era. 
1630, King Sokdam died and his cousin Prasad Thong led a violent coup to seize the throne. Prasad Thong tried to assassinate the head of the Nihon Machi, Yamada Nagamasa, who was a prominent figure in the previous monarch's court and head of the royal bodyguards. Because Prasad Thong committed the double regicide of King Sokdam's sons, when Nagamasa heard of the coup, he rebelled. But in 1630, Prasad Thong poisoned him and expelled the Japanese from Ayutthaya. Prasad Thong feared that the Japanese community would retaliate for the murder of Nagamasa and burn the Nihon Machi, expelling or slaughtering the community's residents. Most Japanese had to flee to Cambodia to safety. As a result, the Tokugawa shogunate responded by regarding Prasad Thong as a usurper and pretender to the throne and severed ties with the kingdom. Formal relations dissolved until 1657 when King Narai ascended to the throne, which the Japanese community played a major part in orchestrating. Under King Narai, the Ayutthaya Nihonmachi was re-established and the community survived until at least the end of the 17th century. However, by the time it was re-established, the Tokugawa shogunate had already begun to impose maritime restrictions for Japanese people, and in 1635 Japanese people were banned from traveling abroad or returning to Japan from overseas. The lack of new Japanese immigrants into Ayutthaya or in Southeast Asia more generally caused these communities to disappear for the most part by the end of the 17th century, with most people assimilating into the local population if they did remain. Nevertheless, Banyapon retained a strongly Japanese character until it was finally destroyed by a Burmese invasion in 1767, and unfortunately very little remnants of the Nihon Machi continue to exist today. In more modern times, a formal marker has been placed on the site to mark where the Japanese Nihon Machi existed, which has been visited by the Japanese emperors Him Akihito and Him Hirohito. However, the end of the Red Seal ships and Japan's seclusion ultimately ended the Nihon Machi in Southeast Asia and closed the door for further immigration to sustain these communities. They endured for decades after the Sukoku Decree but eventually disappeared into the historical margins until the 19th century when Japan once again opened its doors to outsiders. The history of the Nihon Machi in Southeast Asia provides an interesting window into how Japanese people tried to confront European colonists moving into Asia during the early modern period, as well as how people in Japan grappled with political shifts within their own nation. The Nihon Machi served as an outlet for people escaping persecution, whether due to their religious beliefs or political alignments during the feudal states period. It was a place where merchants, ordinary people, and dishonored warriors tried to reinvent themselves and build new lives during a time period of tremendous change. So in many ways, it's not so different from the modern Nihon Machis that you might find in Los Angeles, New York City, or even San Francisco in the United States and elsewhere in the world. And that's all I have for you today. If you made it this far in the video, I'm very grateful for your watching. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you would consider pressing that like button and feel free to subscribe if you want more videos. I post videos on various historical topics and would love to see you again. Thanks again and goodbye.